The main event for Bellator 270 features a much-anticipated rematch in the lightweight division between Peter Quilly from Ireland and Patricio Pitbull from Brazil. Now, these guys fought earlier this year. It was uh, unfortunately a fight that ended a little bit quicker than people expected because of a cut to Pitbull. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we break down this fight. Let's go over the particulars here now. Peter Quilly is 13-5-1 overall, 3-1-1 in his last five fights. Currently a dog, so even though he won the initial fight here, he is an underdog at plus 160. He's from Dublin, Ireland, 32 years old in eight months, so he'll be 33 years old soon. He's 5'10 in height with a 74.5-inch reach. He trains at SBG Ireland, which is pretty much the main gym there in Ireland. That's where Connor and a bunch of the Irish fighters fight at him. As for Patricio Pitbull, he's 23-10-0. He's 3-2 in his last five fights. He's currently a slight favorite at minus 150 to minus 190, depending upon what book you're looking at. He's 35 years old in nine months, so he'll be 36 years old soon. 5'7 in height with a 71-inch reach, and he trains out of Pitbull Brothers, which is the gym, obviously, him and his brother run down there in Brazil. Now, according to Tapology, Pitbull and Quilly are pretty much even here. Quilly's getting 56 of the, 56% of the votes compared to 44% of the votes coming in for Pitbull. Now, the initial fight... Okay, these guys fought back in May of this year. Now, in that fight, I believe Pitbull came in as a, as a pretty significant favorite. The fight starts off, and it's fairly even on the feet, okay? At some point, okay, Peter Quilly cuts Pitbull. Now, that's just from the jabs, so it's just a matter of repetitive jabs. Nothing too violent. He just catches him the right way. He ends up cutting right above the eye of, 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 of Patricio, or P P P Patricky, I'm sorry. It's not a terrible cut. When it's a pappy, now we go to round two. And now in round two, Patrick gets a takedown here on Peter Quilly. And as a takedown is happening, Peter Quilly is now landing hard elbows from the full guard position. And on his back, he's landing these hard elbows. He lands about two or three hard elbows to the top of the head. Um, not the back of the head, though there was some speculation initially that it was back. It was not. It was top of the head and then right around that top corner of the head with a nice hard elbow. What ends up happening now is Pitbull is bleeding from all over the place. It's like a, a gunshot wound that you can't find the entry point where he's just bleeding everywhere. As round three is about to start, it's like there's blood coming from everywhere. The corner did not do a great job. Doctor comes in and just says, listen, we're waving this thing off here. He's bleeding all over the place. So from that standpoint, it wasn't like Pitbull got hurt. It wasn't like he gave up. It wasn't like he gassed out. None of those factors. But the reality is here, Peter Quilly did some significant damage in a very short period of time. This is the start of round three. So within the first two rounds, Peter Quilly was putting a bang-up job on Pitbull. Cut him above his eye, coming to the side of his head. And so the damage is significant. Um, what I felt like the big advantage for Peter in that fight was that even when they were jabbing from a distance, the reach advantage was significant, okay? It says he's 74 and a half inch reach compared to 71 for Peter, for Patricio Pitbull. But when you watch them fight, Peter Quilly is just a much longer fighter. He's got a sort of a karate-esque type of style to what he's doing. Kicks a little bit, keeps good, at, you know, keeps good distance, good range. Whereas Patricio Pitbull is the kind of guy who's setting up that one shot, right? He wants the one shot. He wants to hurt you then follow up and sort of pound you out and finish the fight that way. And he's got a good ground game too, which is kind of ironic. He has a good ground game and he took down Peter Quilly in the first fight. Problem is when he took him down, he took a few hard elbows, which ends up finishing the fight for him because of the cuts. So... I think Queeley, at this point in his career, um, is the better fighter. Patricky e. Pitbull, he gives me the impression, and this is I could be completely wrong here. At his age, at 35, about to be 36, and having fought 33 fights in his career, he's slowing down. Now, that's an obvious point, right? 33 fights, 36 years old, almost. But there's a significant slowdown. I think you saw that in the initial fight. He's not as reactive. He's not as responsive. Um... He doesn't have the quickness that I believe he once had. And so for a guy like Queeley, who's sticking and moving and, you know, the Muhammad Ali shuffle and he's circling and trying to get in and out, you know, jab, hit him, come out. It was like Pitbull was responding too late. It's like he's a half a second too late on everything. Now, I'm acknowledging the fact that Pitbull is the harder puncher. So if it comes down to like who hits harder and who has the better finishing ability, yes, I give the edge to Pitbull. Okay. When it comes to experience, I give the edge to Pitbull. The guys fought 33 fights compared to 19 fights for Queeley, all right? So, but when it comes to fighter IQ and cardio, I give that edge to Queeley. I noticed that Queeley was fresher. Even, I know it was two rounds that fight, but he just appeared more more of a fresh fighter. He appeared like he just was, his cardio was more up to speed. And if that fight had gone to four or five rounds, and it was a five-round fight, but it ends after two rounds, I felt as if that would benefit Peter Quilly in the long run. He was more active, he was punching more, and he looked fresher. And in terms of IQ, 
man, I thought it was brilliant on his part that when he gets taken down, he goes ahead and hits Pitbull with three or four elbows in a row. Um, they were very well placed. He knew what he was doing. It was smart fighting. Um, a lot of guys get taken down on their back, and they're like, you know, they can't do much. They, they just hold on. They can't get up. Um, what does he do? He ends up ending the fight, in essence, while on his back, you know, not from a knockout or TKO, but because he's able to go ahead and create this massive additional cut after he already cut Pitbull on the feet. So this fight was in May, which is another thing that I want to mention here. If you're not familiar with, for example, scar tissue, and how it heals, it does take time, and it's different for every fighter. Now, this is plenty of time. We're talking about, you know, seven months or so removed. But, but, am I going to be shocked if Patricio gets cut, I mean, Patricio, I keep calling him, if Patricky gets cut early, and he's bleeding early on? Am I going to be shocked? Well, I'd be shocked if by third round, he's bleeding a lot again, and that Quilly has found a way to get those sharp elbows back on his head again? No. Now, I've heard some people suggest that Pitbull wins the fight because he's going to wrestle, take the fight to the ground. That would be the intelligent thing for Pitbull to try to do. But he's tried that with this guy before, and it ended the fight for him. And second of all, I don't think his takedown offense is going to be that effective, per se, in round four or five of this fight. So could round one go to Patricia, Patricky Pitbull because he takes down Quigley, and he owns the position, and he owns um, you know position points and gets a few strikes on the ground? Yeah. But look, the, the confidence advantage is definitely on the side of Queeley. And I heard one person say today that the fight goes a distance and they see Pitbull winning by distance. That to me is almost an impossible scenario for two reasons. One, his cardio is not as good as Queeley. And two, this fight is where? It's in Ireland. Okay, you've got a bunch of Irish fighters on this card. Most likely, if a fight goes to decision and it's close, I'm going to favor the Irish fighter. You don't want to be holding a ticket from a Brazilian fighter, okay, in Ireland in a close fight. So all arrows to me point towards Peter Quilly getting this fight and getting the rematch, winning it, and also taking the belt. And imagine this. It's the main event. It's in Ireland. He won the prior fight, which brings me to the money line. I'm just... I'm, I'm utterly shocked that he's a plus 160 underdog. Now, there was some rumors that when the books first opened up, he was actually a favorite. I think that the last name Pitbull, I think the family name, I think Patricky's past, those things are all lending towards the reason why he's a favorite. Let me poke some holes, though, in his game. In my opinion, in my opinion, when it comes to Patricky Pitbull, he beats a lot of average fighters, and he's definitely going to beat up a lot of cans. But whenever he takes a step up in competition... Like whenever he has to fight a better fighter like Michael Chandler, who he lost twice to, okay, or like Anderson, who he lost to, or the fact that he lost his last Ryzen fight, okay, these are the signals. These are the signs that, look, when a higher level competition comes in, he's got a problem, okay? Now he's losing fights in Ryzen. You know, I'm, I'm just suggesting right now, I see a dip here for Pitbull. I see him kind of taking a slide down here. I think his best days are well behind him. I think for Peter Queeley, he's like right in the midst of his prime. The guy's only fought 19 total fights compared to 33 fights on his opponent. He just seems fresher. He, he did not get cut up in May like this other guy did. So, again, I think the, the cut's going to take a toll here. I think he's going to get cut up again. The elbow's going to play a factor again. And so long as Queeley can avoid the big shot, as long as he could use his head and avoid the big punch from Pitbull, he should be fine. Um, so with all that said, at plus 160, the main event for the Irish fighter, I think this is like a gimme. So I will bet this fight straight up in one unit. I'll put one unit here on Quigley to win the fight. I'm confident he wins the fight. I'm not confident how. is it, If it finishes again inside the distance because of some kind of a cut again or some kind of injury to, to Pitbull, I could see that. Um, but by decision, I could kind of see that even more, right? Now, one thing I want to know. In their initial fight, Patricky Pitbull does land a handful of lower leg kicks that Peter uh, was not happy with, okay? At some point, if you watch that film, and the link's in the description here, his leg is kind of beat up, okay? And again, it's only two rounds, okay? So if it had gone five rounds and Pitbull was not cut up and was still using the lower leg kicks, I could see that being a gigantic problem for Peter Quilly, which I'm sure his team's going to adjust to because he was taking some hard lower leg kicks, and you can see the bruising, the swelling was already there. He was already changing stances, so he was initially starting off in a traditional stance, and then eventually he moved to southpaw because he was having a hard time with his left leg, the lead leg. You know, so a lot to a lot to be analyzed here. I, I can see both fighters coming out, fighting a little different, making adjustments. And is there a world where, where, where Patricky Pipple comes in here and just decks him and wins the fight by a knockout and TKOs him? 
Yeah, but I'm 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 seeing this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a fighter who's declining, and then I'm seeing a fighter who's fighting in his hometown of Ireland. I believe that Peter Quilly wins this fight. He becomes the end new champion there for the vacant belt, and uh, he has a big party there in Ireland. So there's our breakdown, guys. If you don't agree with me. Please comment. Give me your point of view. What do you think is going to happen in this fight? Are you a Pitbull fan? Are you a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fan? Do you think he's going to be able to bring the fight to the ground in his territory and wrestle him up? It's pretty personal, too. Consider the fact that Patricio Pitbull is usually in his corner. After they fought in May, Patricio Pitbull did have a verbal exchange with Quilly. It was not disrespectful, but it was along the lines of, like, let's do this again, and next time it's not going to work out that way. So, Revenge is a motherfucker, right? <laughs> so here we go. It's an opportunity right now. I think this door opens or closes for Pitbull. So if Pitbull wins the fight, he gets the belt. It's like, I'm back. I'm back. Brazil's here. If he loses this fight, this will be three fights in a row that he loses. And that's notable because he lost the fight, obviously, back in May to Peter Quilly. He lost the fight in 2019 against Tafik Musayev. Now, he's fought two times in the last three years or so. And both times he lost. I see an older fighter slowing down not as quick um too many hits to the head man these people brothers are f tough guys and sometimes he just takes too many hits I, I don't love that fighting style it adds up over time and so now even though he's 35 turning 30, 36 he's more like a 40 year old fighter at this point there's a lot of wear and tear in those tires and not a lot of tread left so there's our breakdown again if you like people to win the fight let me know